Uh, I know you said you said he's talking slow because you're thinking slow. I gotta talk slow. Sometimes we say it so fast you forget what who 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 this thing is about. They'd have written books about everything but Jesus. I got a book on my desk in there now. A guy sent me a few years back. I need to call him and ask him because he thought it was about the end of the world. He thought it was about everything but Jesus. You want me to help you get to the end of your world? When you find him, you're going to find you found the end. Did he not say, I am the Alpha? I am the Omega. I am the beginning. See, a lot of people still worried about the end. The reason why you're worried about your end, because you ain't met him yet. I know what my end is. Somebody said, what's going to happen to me when I die? I've already died. Oh, here we go. Oh, God. No, you can't be with him until you at first accept what he's already done for you. How many of you know he died for you? No, he, he died not for you, but he also died as you. He the one who gave me this new beginning. I figured it out. You know what? See, I, didn't, I know I didn't get all the right stuff when I came into this world. I didn't get all the right stuff. <laughs> I was missing in a lot of areas. And how many times have we said this? If I could just go back and live my life all over again, could I tell you a secret? You would do it the same way you did it the last time. So God ain't trying to go back and fix your old life so you can figure out how to live it better all over again that ends up the same way. But what he said was, see, most people don't know what born again is. They think it's just a church doctor. I got born again. What does that mean? You got born again, but you never learned how to talk again. You never learned how to be cared for by a God that loved you. Because we're still trying to base everything up on our first birth. See, when, when you get born again, I know we're saying them crazy songs. My hand look new. No, they don't. They look the same old way. You still got, if you had... Ugly fingers, you got ugly fingers now. Okay, your feet don't look no different. They still look the same. I still got coins on the side. But my born again wasn't about my hands looking new. It wasn't about my feet looking new. It wasn't even about me looking new. I had to get a new mind. Because some of y'all want to be born again with the same old man you had before you got born again. See, when I got born again, I realized his thoughts I found some things out about him. His thoughts were not like mine. I found some things about him his ways wasn't like mine. I am so tired of us putting Jesus on our way. Jesus is the way. Most of you want him to make a way. He don't need to make one because he is. And what you need to do instead of you trying to make him make a way, you need to make your way to the way. God is so good to us. If there's one thing I really believe is so needful in this hour, it's the fact that we need to take Jesus from being that fantasy and being the reality of our life. See, many of you are still concerned about your life, and your life don't count. Only his does. 
We want to live a life that's comfortable in this life. And some things in God is so uncomfortable, but it works. Oh, yeah, it is. It, it works. See, it's uncomfortable for someone to request your coat. I mean, your cloak, and you got to give them your coat, too. That's very uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to be slapped and turn the other cheek. Eh? <laughs> See, some of us ain't born again. <laughs> we thought we were. Uh, you see, what happens, it, 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 you can tell when you get born again by who answers your door when trouble comes. A lot of times we, we are born again until we need to be born again. We're not born again when we need to be born again. See, in my new birth, I got delivered from a lot of things. And the first one I had to be delivered from was myself. You ain't gonna believe this. Many of us, I know, we got our Versace's. Our Gucci and Gucci, and all them other big names we got. Could I tell you something? God don't even see the little tag in the back of my shirt this morning. I know y'all, y'all came in smelling good, and you saying, "Lord, I'm smelling good for Jesus." He don't even smell that. Would, would you believe if I told you today that he don't even know you after your flesh? Would you believe it? He knows no man after the flesh. None. Not President Trump. Not the mayor. He only have one way he can know you and you can know him. And just like he don't know you in your flesh, you ain't going to know him. Your flesh can cry all it wants to cry, but he don't know your flesh. You got to get deeper than that, my friend. He didn't, he didn't give you the Holy Ghost so he can hear from your flesh. Well, Lord. See, we got born again so we have a spirit in us that he can know us by. He said, if you have not this spirit, you ain't his. You baby kids. So now, we got born again, and then just like a newborn baby, you have to learn how to walk and talk all, and all of that. I ain't never seen no babies born as grown as Christians. God forbid that woman that had these Christian babies, because they come out grown. They know everything is about God before they even showed up. Could I tell you, if you'll take your time and let God grow you, Will you let God grow you? See, I, I didn't know how to tie my shoes. Somebody showed me how. But I grew. I didn't, I didn't come out tying my shoes. But we don't want to give people the opportunity to be grown by God. See, people can grow you, and they're going to grow you messed up like they are. But if you let God grow you. You, you know what the Bible says is that if you remain in the vine, guess how you're going to grow? you got to stay connected to the vine because what's running through the vine is what's running through him and that's going to produce good fruit. We have produced a lot of things but ain't nothing worth keeping. Praise God. I, I, I want us to for just a minute I, we want to do communion for all those that are here you so desire but I don't just want to do communion. I think for a long time we, we learned how our practices were supposed to be 
And in learning the practices of stuff, we lost the meaning of what it should have done. See, I believe if God gives you something to do, it works. But you got to work it like it's supposed to work. I am not into a whole lot of religious things, and most of you probably know that by now. Because I want to know God. I don't want to know God just in symbol. I don't want to know God just in a shadow. This week, he spoke to me and said, I am the light. I've been in church almost 40 years. Well, it is 40 years. It's been over 40 years now. He said, I am the light. I thought I knew what that meant. I am the light of the world. I am the light. The light is every man's path that come into the world. You know what it keeps on talking about? It said, but they wouldn't come to the light. You know what the Lord began to deal with me about? He said, my people are not trying to come to the light. They're trying to adjust to the darkness. He said, my people are not trying to come to the light. They're just trying to adjust to the darkness. We are learning how to live miserable. We just make adjustments. We have learned how to live without peace. We just make adjustments. And then we wonder why we're still struggling with life. Because you'll never understand life till you come to the light. We're good at adapting. You know what evil is? It ain't the guy smoking crack. It's a saint who murmurs and complains and won't believe. We would rather complain about our conditions than come into the light that God can show us where we are. Your answer is not. Man, I heard people going crazy. Man, they're shutting down the government. Shut it down. We're in a kingdom that cannot be moved. Ain't nobody going to shut down the kingdom of God. My peace ain't wrapped up in that. Lord, let me come to the light. I don't want to come part of the way. I want to come all the way into the light of God so that I can see what God has provided for me. Oh, praise God. You're worried about stuff that God already took care of. You're worried about things that God already handled. You're sitting here worried about stuff. If you ain't God, you don't have no worry. Yeah, I ain't got enough this. Yeah, you got everything. I have given you everything that pertains to life. Don't tell me you don't have it. Mm -mm. Let's just get honest today. If we don't have it, it's because we don't want it. All right? So we need to realize what we're doing. We need to come to terms with where we are. We have blamed everybody because we don't have no peace. We don't blame everybody. We blame the devil. He so is tired of you blaming him for everything. He crying before God now. They blame me for everything. You can't blame the devil no more. I'm sorry. Last I read, you know what I read? I got a captain that triumphed over him. Now, what are you crying about? What side are you on? Where are you located at? I, I, I ain't got them testimonies. I'm like, oh, man, the devil whooped me. I always chase me. I always, oh, God, yeah, y'all pray for me. It ain't me. 
No. I woke up this morning, I wasn't feeling defeated. I ain't felt defeated in a long time. It's been a long time since I've I felt defeated and mullet grew up and all that, you know, hanging head now. Y'all, please, y'all, pray to God, please help me. Because I pulled little on me. You know, he just didn't give me enough Holy Ghost like he gave y'all. Oh, I'm trying to find in the scriptures where that he kind of made difference in us. I'm trying to find in the scriptures where if I was a preacher, he gave me no Holy Ghost. You can believe this. He didn't give me no more Holy Ghost to preach. I didn't exercise this morning trying to get it out. He didn't give me no more Holy Ghost than he gave you. Did you know that? Do you know the Holy Ghost in me and the Holy Ghost in you can do the same thing? See, that's why I don't live on other people's testimony. This morning I'm riding, he said, you know what? It's about time people live in my testimony. And the Bible said that John was in the Isle of Patmos, and why was he there? He is there because of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you what Jesus' testimony was? He said something like this, that he was dead. And guess what? He's alive. How long? Forevermore. Do you know what your testimony should have been? I was dead. I was dead. Uh oh, here we go. I said I was dead, but now I am a. You can't give God praise if you're still dead. He said that He had built you up to be lively stone. And I'm, I'm not just alive for Sunday morning service. I'm just not alive for Wednesday night Bible study, but I'm alive forevermore when I get up every day. Guess what? I wake up. I'm alive. Somebody said, I'm alive. Say, I'm alive. Because a dead man don't know nothing. A dead man can't praise him. There's no praise in the grave. If you're alive, you better start acting like you're alive. If you say you got life, you need to start acting like you got life. You need to start getting up every day and thanking God for the life he's given you. Man, y'all got me preaching. I'm not even on to preach today. But I do want, I do, I don't just want to have a communion. I, I, I'm tired of all of the religious acts that we do that has no meaning. I think we have suffered enough sicknesses. We have suffered enough weaknesses. A few weeks ago, I tried my best to preach what he gave me, but it was exciting to me, but it didn't feel exciting to you. <laughs> and I realized sometimes I'm still kind of blinded by your reactions. But when he told me, in order to come all the way out of Egypt, you got to eat all of the lamb. Some of you, your taste buds, weren't quite ready to eat it all. See, Bishop, sometimes he got some nasty stuff in there you need to eat. And he said, I don't want you to just eat the lamb, but you got to eat the pertness, the chitlins, and all of that. Oh, here we go. I told you. I told you. I see them faces. Just did. Well, 
Well, you were doing good, Pastor. I was living on them leg, on them lamb chops and everything. Now you don't start talking about the chitlins in there. He said, but if you want to come all the way out, you're going to have to eat all of this. Because all that you don't eat is going to come back on you later. See, you know, a lot of times, you know, they say that at, 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 at mama's first milk, supposed to put all the nutrition in a body. I, I can't, they got a name for that stuff, but I ain't, no, you know, I ain't never had no babies. But anyway, it's supposed to, at first milk from the mama to that child, should have everything that child needs to build immune systems, what they call that one? Oh, <laughs> call it mama's milk, first milk. <laughs> it's supposed to have in there everything that child could need. All of it. And see, before he could bring them out, they had to eat everything in it so that you may not need what you think you need right now, but later on. You know why most people can't finish the race? Because they didn't eat all the lamb, see? If they'd ate all the lamb, see, they... Oh, glory. I'm telling you, we think that somehow life is an accident. It ain't no accident. You won't be able to rejoice and say, all things are working for the good. Unless you ate all the lamb. See, when you don't eat enough, you, you won't believe enough. I believe God gave us these things to help us understand. And we're going to get rid of ready right now. I ain't going to keep on preaching. I know you smell chicken, macaroni and stuff. I smell it. And I realize I'm competing against your better half. But God wants us to know something here today. We need to take this communion today where the idea is that I want all of you. See, everybody said all. I, I don't want just a little piece. I want all of it. Because I realized I didn't eat enough. Oh, yeah. I didn't eat enough. Man, I... I messed around there, you know. How many times we had communion service, you went out and somebody made you mad right after you got out of the service? You know what happened? You didn't eat quite enough. Two weeks from communion service, doctor gave you a bad report. You got cancer. Oh, God. Guess what? If you eat enough lamb, whatever that doctor say ain't going to change the lamb you ate. I don't know where we are this morning, but I will say this here. I don't serve a God that's a fantasy anymore. Everything he's promised me, he's been just that. Everything. And I'm yet discovering more. Every day I wake up, I discover more about him. He said, you know, when I first created my first man, the lights were on. And in my light, all Adam had to do was discover what I made. Why do I want to be in the light of God? Because I'm trying to discover what he got for me. You understand what I'm saying? See, a lot of people trying to walk and look through the glass darkly, trying to adjust. And we're hitting and missing. We'll say God wanted me to do this this day and next week is something else. You need to come to the light. All right, come to the light. Come to the light of God. Where there's life, there is peace, there is perfect love. Yeah. Darkness always produces fear. 
If I want to scare you, put you in darkness, people don't get scared when you say boo in the daytime. Boo! Jump out at night, though. Boo! It's time to get rid of all your fears. I say it's time to get rid of all of them. Because if you understand one thing, you can't come to his light and still walk away scared. I read this over and over again. Now he was betrayed how he was willing to break bread under such a dark cloud. One thing you have to realize in Jesus' life that was purpose, and in his life there still, still is purpose. If you're in God, you've got purpose. He said, and he said, part of our problem is, is that we never discern the body we haven't yet to discern the body. Most of us believe that we need to examine this body. The first thing you need to do is discern his body. The body that bore all your sin. The body that took the strike to heal your body. So when we take communion, most of the time we're so looking at ourselves and how bad we are that we forget what he done to make you good as you can be. Your dying done nothing for the kingdom of God. But his death done everything for you. God didn't reconcile with you because you had something to give him. He had to reconcile with you because he had something to give you to make you more like him. God in all of his holiness could never ever define who he is or ever try to escape his, his spiritual integrity being who he is. He being holy, it would take him to fix us. There ain't nothing you could do to fix yourself. You had nothing to offer God that he could use whatsoever. Nothing. He said, I want to reconcile. I want to sit down. And you're going to say, well, God, all I got to give you my sin. He said, I don't even need your sin. I don't want your sin. Because I'm going to take that and I'm going to give you something. You know what happened to most people today in church? They said they gave God their sin, but they never received what God had for them. You're still stuck in a position where God don't want you. He wants you to receive. He came to give and not to take. I come that you might. Come on, say it to me. Say what now? Don't be scared. Some of y'all scared to open up your mouth. He came that we might have life. How I many you know he wasn't talking about you catching a sale at Macy's? How I many you know that the life he came to give you was not going to be in bricks? Or wood. Did you know the light he came to give me was going to set on 24s? Well, 22s, whatever it is. I'm still working with 17s, whatever that is. So he came to give us light, but you know what? We don't want what he came to give. Because we believe that life consists of what we got. 
Did you know what he said? Basically, he said, your life does not consist of the things you possess. If some of y'all lost everything you had right now, you want to go and jump off a building and kill yourself. I can't believe God and took everything. You're not going to believe this. When God started out working with man, man didn't have nothing but God. You know when he got in trouble? It's when he started adding more stuff and less of God. God says, I just want you. I want you. I want to give you life. Unless another day. But right now, let's move on. Let's get ready and get, get serious about what we're getting ready to do. Now here is what I want you to be thinking on as we prepare to do this. You know, he said, do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. Many of us, after a while, we forget. I got an excuse. I'm over 50. When I forget now, I call it a senior moment. Every now and then, I need to be reminded of some things. I've seen too many Christians suffering these years because they forgot. They forgot. There were things that God wanted to hold them in remembrance. They had forgot. You know, David said, he said, bless the Lord, oh, and all, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. But then what happened, David realized that some of you might forget. You might forget why you're blessing it. So he said, bless the Lord on my soul. And he said, forget not. What, what? That little three-letter word said, what, all? This said, all? all? Don't forget all of his benefits. Some of you here today, y'all need to remember some things. Before we take communion, you need to remember some things. Before we get started, you need to remember some things. Because you, if not, you're going to come in here all condemned with your head hanging down, kicking yourself in the teeth. But if you can remember this, he said, don't forget these benefits. I am he who forgiveth all, everyone said, thine iniquity. It was past, you know, last week was not a good week. I've been through some things last week. I don't care if it was 1 o'clock this morning, but I'm going to tell you what he done. Benefits. See, you know, since they're taking communion, if you don't believe that, because it won't do you no good. See, some people want to get better without doing what makes you better. Huh? Who... Heal it. All. Everybody said all. Now, now we're here. I, I, I believe in healing above everything else. And if most of you know me, I don't even care a hoot about too many doctors at all. I'm going to have to be deathly sick to even, even mess with them. And the reason why is because I found a physician. And the position I found was in the covenant I was in. And he told me in that covenant. You know what he told me in that covenant? I will heal. Y'all scared to say all. But then say all but mine. 
Well, for the rest of y'all. I believe God will heal us of all. But brother Wilson, this is serious. Every disease is serious. Who redeems my life from destruction. He crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies. I think we need to remember some things. If you're sick, don't take communion with the idea that you're going to always be sick. If you're sick today, I want you to partake of that part of the body that heals. He said, this is my body that's broken for you. Let's eat with that in mind. He wants to heal my body. He wants to heal my soul. Come on, stand with me real quick. And I think we have enough room, and I hope we have enough cups. And once again, you're not forced to partake. But if you so desire to partake today, if you so desire today and say, you know, Lord, I, I need to eat some more lamb. I've been going through a lot of stuff that I know it ain't you. I've been going through a lot of things that I know I don't have to go through. Because I forgot. But today I have remembered. And because I have remembered today, I'm going to partake. I'm going to eat like I did the first time. I'm going to consume all of it. I'm going to take this piece and call it the whole. Let it be everything in that lamb. Let it be in this piece. Now what I want you to do is, is come. If you have kids. I want you to make sure you man that position. Don't let them pour the juice. How should I do this? I think we better come around and get it. You're going to break your own piece off. You're going to break your own piece of bread off. Take as much as you need or you feel you need. Like I said, you know what you have need of. And everything you have need of is in Jesus. Are we in agreement with that? I said, are we in agreement with that? Everything you need Amen. is in Jesus. So what I want you to do, I want you to come, if you would, please, quickly, as we come and we'll be out of your hair here in just a second. Like you're going to give an offering, but you're going to partake, get a cup, and grab your piece of bread. Precious God, we love you. Lord, I thank you, being the God that you are. You have healed me. You have forgiven me. You have crowned me. You have satisfied my mouth with good things. Lord, today as we go and partake of this body, we discern that there's healing virtues in this body. There is deliverance in your body. We thank you, Lord God, there is so much forgiveness in your body. I thank you, Lord, today that you've already made the way that we're looking for. Bring us to the light that we might be illuminated in our minds, that we might truly understand what we are doing from day to day. God, I praise you. I love you, Lord. Hmm. The Bible says, for as heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. And you got to remember one thing. Just to have the mercy of God is, there's no words. We don't even have words in the English language that even describe the mercy of God. Matter of fact, when you look the word up, they can only call it loving kindness. But it said, my mercy is so high above the earth. 
And that mercy is high above the earth. He said, I extend it to all those that fear me, that reverence me. Recognize me. As far as the east is from the west, so has he removed our transgressions from us. If you can ever find east going west, then you can find your sin. But if you can't find east going west or west going east, he can never find your sin. He goes on to say, and I had never with this far before, but like as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them that fear him, for he knoweth our frame. He remembers that we are dust. God never forget who you were. You are but dust. You already know how frail dust is. That's the reason why when you live a dusty life, you become the buffet of your adversary. He's been cursed to crawl on his belly and eat dust. So if you want to remain on his smokers, boy, just keep acting calm. But you that are here today, we're not food for the enemy. We are the heartbeat of God. We are the apple of his eye. I want you, as we Prepare to partake of this bread. Remember, this is his body. I'm not trying to get into visualization and none of all that stuff, but I am saying, if you are sick, I, I want you to take this, and I want you to say, Lord, thank you for allowing me to partake of that healing that was in your body. If you are needing deliverance, whatever it might be, I want you to thank God right now as we bless this bread. We're blessing it with healing. We're going to bless it with peace. We're going to bless it with love. We bless it with forgiveness. We're going to bless it as his body has been blessed for us, given for you. Now, Lord, we take this bread and we eat. And this cup, which is symbolic of his blood, it was his blood that sealed the deal. Now I'm going to take this cup, this New Testament cup, this new covenant cup, and I'm going to put life in that flesh, in that piece of bread I just ate. Now the life of that desire for my healing, I now drink. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to thank God right now. Now I want you to thank him for what you, what you have just partook of. I want you to thank God for the healing that's in taking place right now in your body. Come on, I said the healing that's taking place in your body right now. We want to thank God that we have partake. We have been a partaker of his broken body. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the healing. Thank you, dear God. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I praise you. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 
I, I expect to hear someone say, I expect to hear someone say somewhere down the road, you know what? That day, I walked out and God had touched my body in such a mighty way. I, I believe God still does what God always have done. I believe that with all my heart. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. God is not trying to keep you from him. He's calling you to him. And with that now, let's pray together. Precious God, you've been so merciful unto us. You've been so good to us. And your goodness, oh God, cannot be outmatched. Lord, I just praise you for speaking into our hearts, into our lives, healing our bodies, forgiving us of all our iniquity, forgiving us of all our sin. God, I thank you that you never leave us nor forsake us. Lo, you're with us always, even to the end of the world. I praise you for that. Now, God, as we dismiss from here, I'm praying for the fellowship that we'll have together today. Pray, God, that our hearts will be open that your love would flow through each of us and let your love be that part of us today that all would see. I pray God wrap us up in your arms today and hold us and keep us, Lord, and strengthen us by the power of your might. We ask all these blessings today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. All right, y'all can consider yourself this man. Shake hands. We'll be downstairs. Uh, how many of y'all like ribeyes? Porterhouses? Wait a minute, since y'all coming down, because ain't going to be none of that. <laughs>